Coaching is about the present day, where you are, where do you want to go? What are your goals? What are your hurdles and obstacles that are in the way that are keeping you from those goals or life issues that you um, want to address? Hello, hello, and welcome to all of you beautiful souls tuning in today to the Heart of the Soul podcast, Earthing Nova on YouTube. My name is Amana, and I am so happy that you're here. I invite you to sync to the cycles of the moon with me with new episodes on full and new moons. This is a space where we explore what it means to be wild women walking upon this earth remembering how to turn inward to our innate inner knowings. We unearth that which is often unseen and unspoken through the ancient ritual of storytelling. It's my hope that soaking in these stories will bring you closer to your own inner compass and center you into a more embodied, alive version of your beautiful, unique self. Today is October 5th. 2023, the moon is currently waning, moving towards the dark. I am currently in Spokane, Washington, with a dear friend and mentor of mine, Tammy. And we are excited to be here with you today and talking about a few different things together. I would love if maybe you just want to introduce yourself in whatever way feels good right now and then we'll start talking about your herbs and teas my name's tammy and i have so i'm in i would consider in my last season of life which may sound hopeless to some but is exciting to me because uh it gives me a time frame of things uh that i want to get done that they would get done and not just wait and kind of languish, hoping they will magically happen. So I have been a uh, store owner. I owned a natural food store for 25 years. Um, I'm weirdly into numbers, though I didn't realize it. I started uh, in July 1989 with my store and closed it July 2013. And so it was exactly 25 years. And um, is that right? Seems wow. when I add it up, it's 25. <laughs> um, and I've been a licensed midwife since 2003 and um, really plan to uh, retire my license this year, which would have been 20 years, 2023. <laughs> Um, but I've stopped doing on-call work and I'm just working, um, within some clinical aspects with some different sweet people. And, uh, in my natural food store, I sold lots of, you know, it was a full service store and I sold a tea that I made, a pregnancy tea that I'd gotten a recipe from a local midwife before I was a midwife. And I started making that and selling it and it sold really quite well. And I continued to sell it until the store closed. Um, and then once the store closed, people still were asking for it. And I was really going to be done with it, but it just kept being that and the lactation tea and the soak. People kept asking for it. So I kept making it. And as I move away from being an on-call midwife, um, I decided that I really wanted to further my tea business. And I'm doing that along with educating about the teas on my website. And I'm just really excited about the opportunity. I'm getting ready to hopefully go a more national, large scale way here in the next month or two. And yeah. Yeah. So I have 11 different teas right now and I have a few more, um, on the back burner, some about fertility, uh, some about love, some about um, just better bones, ways to take care of our body to get the minerals, the mm -hmm. micro macro minerals and nutrients that we might not be getting in our diet. Lovely. Yeah. So I also meant to mention like how we know one another. Oh. And like, so yeah, Tammy was my midwife many years ago now eight over eight years ago 
And then she moved in a few doors down from where I was living. Four doors down. Would you would you like to be my neighbor? She said. <laughs> I said, yes, yes, I do. And she has really supported me and held me and been with me over these years and been an incredible mentor and presence and crone woman in my life. And I'm so grateful for you and all these times. Amana fed me. I was very sad when they moved away because no longer were her extras for her meals um, coming my way, which (laughs) I cannot tell you. I mean, I took pictures and showed people of the food that she would drop off at my doorstep, text me and say, there's food on your, on your doorstep. Oh, it was such a joy to offer you Mm -hmm. those. Yeah. Creations. Yeah. Um, and also, yes. So her teas, yes. I loved your tea. I remember drinking your pregnancy tea. It was part of your like package Mm -hmm. that you offered women that tea. And I love that it was in loose leaf and that I got to just, I don't, I could tell and could feel the way that you spoke about it, how passionate you were and how beloved it was and how impactful you felt like it has been for women and it was also for me in pregnancy birthing and postpartum and then you also did something that I had never heard about before which was part of your midwifery package included a vaginal steam and I feel like now these like even like eight nine years later way more people know about it now than they did then Mm -hmm. but I'm curious for you like where did When did you first know of steaming and when did you start the practice for yourself and what has it meant to you? And would also love to hear that little story you told me before we started recording Mm -hmm. and then go into like, or whenever it fits, like the herbs that you use and, you know, maybe why a few of them. And I would love to say something else about the pregnancy tea as Mm -hmm. you were talking about it, it brought it to mind. So what I had found uh, was that it women who had difficulties postpartum and previous pregnancies with too much bleeding, hemorrhaging, postpartum, maybe, you know, even a week later, um, they were really going into pregnancy worried about their immediate postpartum time and their postpartum time in general, in just their recovery. And I found that when women drank this tea um, really regularly during pregnancy, especially towards the end, um, really trying to get in a quart of it a day. And it, it, we call it tea. It's it's an infusion. Um, the herbs are steeped at least a half an hour. And women were I was observing anecdotally, but, and I'm hearing from other midwives and from the women themselves that their bleeding was so much less. And what I saw is that it would raise their uh, hemoglobin, hemoglobin, (laughs) say that twice, um, and hematocrit markedly towards the end of pregnancy. If they tended towards anemia, I had a store, so I saw lots of products go out for that purpose. And the tea itself, if people were religious about drinking it, really seemed to uh, make a difference. And so, so much so that by the time kind of my last, when I moved back to Spokane, I made it part of the package that instead of asking people to drink it, I required them to, because I provided it. Now, obviously I'm not, you know, showing up at your house to make sure you drink it. But just encouraging people to, and they just would have a really tended to have a straightforward birth. Obviously, your what you drink doesn't make your birth good necessary, but it seemed to help aid, uh, just facilitate a good regular length labor. And in then once they had the baby, I always encourage people to drink like a glass of it during labor and then immediately postpartum. Mm -hmm. And they just didn't bleed very much. And I rarely have had to use any kind of herbs or drugs postpartum for bleeding. And uh, uh, the other last bit about it is I used it for myself during menopause. Mm -hmm. If I had any weird bleeding Mm -hmm. and I would just drink a quart like all at once and the bleeding would just stop and 
either be normal or be gone entirely. So it just has some really great properties, those all those yummy herbs that are yeah, in so there. We want to get some more <laughs> now today from you. Don't let me forget. Um so are there like you formulated this yourself, this tea? The original formula was from a midwife who had gotten it from midwives at midwifery school. So I don't know who the originator was. I get that. And then I changed some of the formulation myself, um, deleted some herbs and added some additional herbs for um, minerals. Yeah. So although you market it as a more like pregnancy postpartum tea, it's also like you said, supportive for you in menopause and supportive for women. Well, and I have a, I have a women's support tea. That is basically similar herbs, pretty much all the one additional herb and a little bit different formula that's Mm -hmm. called women's support. Okay. So if it isn't about bleeding, you're just worrying, concerned more about getting your hormones to balance, has herbs that help with the liver, herbs that help to build your blood and support um, hormone regulation. Okay. Good to know because yeah it's all about your body functioning at its optimum because it wants to balance your hormones and so that's what these herbs do totally um and so steam herbs how did you first come across steaming and then started creating your own herbs to offer women for steaming and i know you did like the packs um I forget what you call them right now. Burritos, herbal the burritos. Herbal burritos. Yeah. yeah. So there's, I have one tea that's called Soothing Soak. It's really a combination of healing herbs. I uh, had a customer years ago at the store who um, had got, she was a commercial seamstress and had gotten her finger poked with a sewing sewing machine needle, you know, a big, big one. And she had gone to the doctor, gotten antibiotics. It really wasn't healing. And she was concerned about Mm -hmm. it. And I sent her home with that soothing soak. um, And she started soaking her finger in that with some salt. And it was better in a matter of days. And Mm -hmm. she was my best friend after that. So, (laughs) but I like, I use those. And also that was a part of my midwifery package is to um, have a package of that for each mom. And I would, when we arrived, either myself or my assistant would make up a gallon or so size of the tea. And so the herbs would just be sitting in there and it makes the house smell yummy. And we steep those. And then once they cool a bit, we strain the herbs off the tea is left to go into the bathtub and it can make two or three baths postpartum. Um, You just mix it with water. And if you want some salt or Epsom salts for just post birth recovery, and then the herbs, I take a gauze and open it up and uh, like a four by four and take a handful of those steeped herbs, put them in there like a burrito, wrap them up and then leave them on a plate or a bowl and put castor oil on them. And then they're worn next to the perineum, wherever the mom or even hemorrhoids, wherever she feels sore. And that just helps her perineum to heal postpartum. Mm -hmm. And then the steam herbs are separate from that Mm -hmm. different formula. Yes. And Mm -hmm. those are for um, any kind of vaginal steaming a person might want to do. I mean, if you look it up, uh, pretty much every um, Google search is a negative about why Gwyneth Paltrow's recommendation of steaming is a bad idea. But it is a traditionally done by um, m- m- really most uh, tra- yeah, yeah, traditional cultures in some form or another for women uh, post their period, um, post birth, uh, menopause you know, at any point along the way that they have um, made it a ritual. And yeah, for anyone that may be listening and is like, what's vaginal steaming? Would you give your few sentences of what, you know, that is? Yeah, there are lots of ways of doing it. The, The way that I chose to do it, that seemed to be the nicest for, um, 
the U.S. culture um, is I use a medical. Um, what do you call those hospital seats? Commode, that, right? It was like it was like a commode. It didn't have the commode part, but, but it, it has didn't the, have the cutout part. But it has yes, the scoop which allows the steam. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so they're pretty inexpensive, and uh, they're plastic and metal so you can um, clean them well afterwards and then I just cover it with a clean sheet and um, I do this the steamed herbs in a um, crock pot get the water actually I get the water to boil on the stove and then I pour it into crock pot to hold it and it sits there for 30 minutes at least where the herbs have been steeping and then it slipped underneath um, in the hole part Uh, underneath the woman who's sitting on the chair and then we wrap her up in blankets so she's warm and then after she sits there uh 20 to 30 minutes most women like will bring something to listen to on their uh their phone something to relax and then I have a massage table close and they lay down on that for 30 minutes minimum uh prefer that they rest for an hour and at the very least, it's just super relaxing time. Mm-hmm. I make no medical claims, yes, but of course. Tra- yeah. traditionally speaking, it's used as warming. Um, if you look at like China, or well, no, I'm sorry, uh, Indian Ayurvedic, mm-hmm. they talk about and Chinese too warming the abdomen. We don't. It's why I use the herbal burritos versus a cold pack postpartum. Mm -hmm. We're taught in the U.S. you want a cold pack. Everybody gets cold pack after they have the baby at the hospital. And really what we want to do is warm that area. So Mm -hmm. warm things. um, And then also postpartum keeping the belly warm. Mm -hmm. So it is traditionally about warming that so that the uterus can return to its its normal location in the body. Uh, Yeah. Did you hear the vaginal steam study that they did? I mean, it was a smaller one, but where um, it seemed to also help with any like stitches and things like. I have not seen that one. Yeah. You will have to send that. I will. Mm -hmm. Um, What was my story? Well, you talked about, yeah. Yeah. So I went to Haiti and worked in a birth center there for three weeks. And there was a woman who was the clinical director. I was working as a midwife and she had, um, she was from a Mennonite community and she'd been a midwife for a long time. And she sat us down one morning in our briefing meeting and said, there are women coming in postpartum who have Um, steam burns we need to tell them not to do vaginal steams and because she and I were the same age I said well no I won't be doing that that actually we need to teach them to not burn themselves but it's a traditional um, thing that is done by their culture and we shouldn't be telling them not to do it Mm -hmm. we should be instead encouraging them to do that learn about it ourselves why they do it, how they do it. And then just give instruction. If there seems to be people being burned, there was only one person who had a steam burn. So it wasn't even like there were very many. Yeah. Like yeah. we were having a rash of burns, but. Um, and what other, are there other times that you feel that steaming can be supportive to them? And I know for me, even I just like enjoyed doing it, you know, just after my cycle or sometimes during my bleed and it's not recommended when you're bleeding yes that's yes. that's just kind of standard but you know is that right I don't know. I don't know I don't know and I didn't know it and I chose to do it anyway mm-hmm. but yes so they say it's not recommended during your bleed but I have found it's supportive to myself at that time great um well it would be warming so mm-hmm. I would think that that would be feeling that would feel good. I I guess for me, the only reason during the bleed that I would say, let's not do anything that pushes anything back. So if it would keep the blood from coming out, um, that would be my only, only concern. I just, 
years ago, I went as I was somebody, it was a neighbor, she was having um, fertility issues and she needed to go have a test. And I don't know what it's called, but where they put the barium up through the fallopian oh, to tubes. see if the tubes if, are patent mm -hmm, yeah if her tubes were open which they were and i and you get to watch it on a screen and you could see the the radioactive the dye. dye move through her full into her uterus because they just injected it there go through her fallopian tubes and then it empties out into her abdominal cavity and i just thought oh that's why we don't want to shove endometrium up up we want it to all flow out because right. we don't want it going into the abdominal cavity we want everything that's supposed to be coming out coming out mm -hmm. so that yeah. would be my only concern about it no well and i get that how it could be like increased bleeding maybe i don't know that there's like the concern that it would create more bleeding but yeah. No, I wouldn't think with warming. I mean, if you warm the pelvis postpartum, mm -hmm. the abdomen and, you know, wear warm packs, that doesn't increase bleeding. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. The other time thing is if you have an IUD, you shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Or if you have um, any kind of jewelry that's like oh, yeah. on the your labia or anything would, would get, yeah. get too hot. And when you are offering it postpartum, it's after the bleed has bleeding has stopped postpartum as well. I mean, that is what you read, but I don't think the people who came in to the birth center in Haiti were all the way done bleeding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. That's very curious. I really would like to do more research about mm -hmm. um, vaginal steams have kind of come into vogue and yes. I have not paid as much attention in the last few years. I've had other things mm -hmm. on my mind, but that would be something I should research more. The other thing that I um, read about, I have not experienced it um, was that people who were having a lot of cramping with their periods, that they, some of them had quite a bit of um, endometrium that had just been accumulating uh -huh. come out the next cycle. Yeah. I mean, I think that would be a good thing though. Yeah. No, they and, were saying yeah. that was good. Yeah. It was like, they said it looked like hamburger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've heard stories of similar, yeah. Mm -hmm. Things where women have steamed and then had mm -hmm. yeah, clots or other things come out that which makes, needed to come out. Yeah. Which yeah. makes sense. You know, again, mm -hmm. warming, all of the abdominal area, because it's not just if you're in a blanket, you've got the steam mm -hmm. happening. Yeah. It's coming towards your vagina. Is mm -hmm. it going all some say it doesn't actually reach the uterus, but everything it's about open. it is warming yeah. that part of your body. So the pelvis and the lower abdomen. So if there's something that needs to come out and warmth is the way to get it to come out, mm -hmm. then that yeah, makes sense. Um, and I also was going to say the one way, another, like, another time that I feel like it has been supportive to people and to myself is also in times of like grief, especially if women have had an early birth or a miscarriage, then mm -hmm. it becomes like a healing opportunity for yeah, our perineum and for the heart. And um, it can be a, I feel like steaming can be such a reparative experience after also if people have had medical trauma to that area of their body. And then this can be a positive reparative experience for the woman to have with her own womb space. And even as you're talking about it, somebody who's had a C-section mm -hmm. might be really, because it's again, warming that lower uterine segment yeah. by having been wrapped in warm blankets, having this warm steam, because the mm -hmm. steam's not just like pinpoint accurate. It's no. coming up underneath yes. everything that's wrapped around the woman. So Absolutely. yeah. And just since I mentioned grief, I'm holding her grief tea right now. It's called grief tea. It is yes. called grief tea. Um, would you like to share a little bit about 
why and how you developed this infusion yeah age. yeah I just had it on my heart I don't even really know why which is funny heart mm -hmm. um so grief we know in Chinese medicine is um has to do with um chest and lungs heart all of this area um I years ago I I had been a part of a a client whose baby had died in the womb and I was part of her birth. She had chosen to go to the hospital to have the baby. And it was very sad, but I didn't have any way at the time of really knowing and knowing what to do for myself. I was supportive of her, but I didn't know how to process it for me. Mm -hmm. And I got a really bad um, lung. Like I I'm sure I had viral pneumonia though. I never had it diagnosed mm -hmm. and was really sick for about six weeks. And I was talking to an acupuncturist and she said, well, of course, of course you had viral pneumonia mm -hmm. because of the grief that you experienced and you didn't have a way of expressing it. So grief has always been on my mind. I've lost both of my parents, both passed due to cancers over the years. And so you know, just my experience with you, you know, just mm -hmm. grief being a part of life. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, these herbs in here are specific um, to heart and um, yeah. And so they're a bit bitter. And mm -hmm. then I, as I thought about it, would people drink it? Because it's a little, it's not like just a, happy-go-lucky tea it mm -hmm. is for grief and which again it, it will address heart too so if you need something that's just supportive of the heart that would be a good tea to drink as both um it has hawthorn leaves flowers and berries and but grief has a bitter component to it and so it makes sense that mm -hmm. it would the herbs would be bitter i as far as like um, most of my combinations are intuitively put together by me. Yeah. And I kind of was apologetic mm. about it, but just the last couple of weeks, I thought, no, I'm actually making this choice with my intuition as well as knowing what the herbs do. But yeah. there are so many herbs that do the same things. Like, yeah. why did I Choose pick those? Them. And I tend to have more herbs in them and many combinations like more um, more number of uh -huh. or a larger number of herbs um and i was feeling apologetic <laughs> about that too and then i was like no this is what i feel so um you know maybe down the road i'll take some herbs out but at this point this is what i have and then i um also will sell um some hibiscus by itself that you can make a hibiscus is one of my very favorite teas and is in my pregnancy and women's yeah. tea too and um, I make a, I started making a quart of the hibiscus tea, which we know is also good for heart, blood pressure, those sorts of things, vitamin, high in vitamin C. And so I make a quart of like this, this is a quart in my hand mm -hmm. of the hibiscus and a quart of the grief. And I sweeten the hibiscus and then I mix them together. So I have a half gallon mm -hmm. and it, ah, my body just has craved it. So evidently beautiful. I have had some grief that I have needed to uh, not, not death grief, but other life griefs that I've needed to process. So, yeah. I mean, I really appreciate that you're naming the tea as a grief tea. I feel like so often right now, especially in this culture, like people don't know what, when people are grieving, we don't know what to do. And the fact that this could be a simple, useful, supportive offering to someone. Mm -hmm. That I could send it in the mail and yeah, or when they come over, make them a cup. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I love that it has rose in it too. Yes. So I love that. There is a beauty also in grief, right? Yes. And rose is such like a grandmother and the mother of all sort of herbs mm -hmm. in a way. Or can be represented as the mother in many ceremonies and other aspects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, are there any other teas you would like to 
you feel passionate about sharing right now? Um, there are a couple newer ones that I do like a lot. Um, I have a liver support tea that is really nice for um, just spring and fall. Um, I have people who have in my life who have been addicted to alcohol and drugs. And I really wanted to create something that they could drink that would help their livers. Plus we know that um, hormones being out of whack uh, have to do, the liver is the main organ to move through hormones. And if we are out of balance and our liver isn't functioning, we can add all the good stuff we could add hormones and it's still not going to balance because the liver is not excreting the ones they excess mm -hmm. that needs to be excreted. So um, liver support is, I just think very important. We don't do it enough. Um, it should be like our spring and fall cleaning for our bodies. Yeah. So there's that. I have a uh, um, antiviral that I made up around mm -hmm. COVID. Mm hmm Great. And I really like that a lot. It's tasty. And uh -huh. um, I try to drink a quart of it when my grandkids come over. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, is the one that you drink sort of like prophylactic? I do. I do. I do. Yeah. Oh, you seem like you might be a little sick. I'm going to drink some antiviral tea. Nice. Um, and then. And then you could also use it if you feel like you're getting sick, then you would also drink it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and then I have a urinary tea that a urinary support. And it was a combination that was made by an herbalist in and sold to nature paths and stores and things um, from, she was from Oregon, but she stopped making it and a local nature path asked me if I would make it. Mm -hmm. So I have that as well that okay. I. So I imagine support. that also would support like the kidneys and mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Neat. So many, so many beautiful things. I love that I have gotten to like witness and be a part of your life across, you know, these many years now. And like when we first met and hearing about that, your business and then a natural food store and you were practicing midwifery at the time. And, and then now you're at this other sort of metamorphosis as you carry wisdom and tools and ways of supporting women through your herbs and your counsel. And now you're taking that into another like way to offer that to women. And I'd love for you to share about what that is. So I've started coaching. Am I supposed to look at them or look I don't at know. you? I'd rather you just look at Okay. Me. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> I would prefer yeah. that anyway, but I feel like I don't want to leave you guys out. No, um, I mean, we can even like cover ourselves here. So, so. Okay. Um, yeah, so I started coaching and, uh, just because I do that. And then I decided I wanted to get uh, some sort of certification and really to understand since coaching was really a flourishing um, occupation these days, mm -hmm. um, make sure that I'm kind of complying with what the what that kind of work looks like. Mm -hmm. And I came to understand that coaching is about asking questions, not giving advice. So if somebody wanted to hire me to actually give them advice, then I would be a consultant. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to do that. Mm -hmm. Then there's a mentor, which we're all familiar with mentors tends to be somebody who either knows more about a subject than we do and wants to bring us up um, and teach us about that so we can be kind of a uh, peer with them, or they generally, we think of them as an older person to a younger person, mm -hmm. bringing you up in their knowledge. Um, and then there's a therapist who you go to and they have medical training and they tend to go into your past and do healing and bring you to, up to the present day. Coaching is about the present day, where you are, where do you want to go? What are your goals? What are your hurdles and obstacles that are in the way that are keeping you from those goals or life issues that you um, want to address? Mm -hmm. And um, it's all about walking alongside somebody. And um, I'm happy to coach men, but I, at this point, really am just focused on coaching women. And 
I love it. It is like, so for me, the tea business and the coaching business are the tea is what in the education that I get to do around it is like what I loved most about my store. Mm-hmm. And I loved my store. It was like a my child that never grew up, but it provided a way for me to have income and feed my family and until it was time for it to be done. And I've loved midwifery and I loved giving to women and being there and just such an honor to be with them as they grow and give birth to their babies and to just walk alongside them during that. Um, And the coaching is the best parts of midwifery. It's being able to just listen and to hear what people are saying, mirror it back to them ask them more questions till they, because we know what we need. Mm -hmm. Who knows better what we need than ourselves. But Mm -hmm. sometimes because of history, wounds. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Not not just that. No, absolutely. The patriarchy. I mean, that goes without saying. Um, Misogyny. Um, But yeah, we've, we have an opportunity when we're being coached to really uncover um, things that that uh, matter to us that we didn't really understand. What mm-hmm. are the hurdles? Sometimes we think it's one, usually we think yeah. it's one thing yes. and it's something else. Yeah. So I'm going to give an example of, I was being a coachy, getting coached by someone And I thought that because I was already doing one for my business, Mm -hmm. I, with another woman, I was going to do it on relationships. So I had stopped dating before COVID and then, you know, not really been interested in getting back into that scene. And I thought, you know, this last season, I, I should, (laughs) I should, I should get (laughs) this right. I should have a good relationship before I die because that is what, you know, would be right to get that right, you know, and then you're concerned about perfectionism. That's important, you know? So I was like, okay, I'm going to do this coaching about a relation, getting a health, having a healthy relationship. So we did some great conversations. I got on some dating apps. I was moving forward with that. And I just, by the end of my going into my fourth session, Mm -hmm. doing some um, looking at my past, like how I was raised. Um, I came away and decided I'd rather have a relationship with my finances (laughs) than a man. So (laughs) so that's what I'm doing. I'm like, I'm kind of picturing money being a a dude and I'm just uh, working on that relationship because I grew up in scarcity mindset. Yeah. And uh, generationally, way back, um, Mm -hmm. that was the case. And so I really had a hard time envisioning ever getting past this kind of, I was like, why am I at this plateau in my career and, and being able to accomplish the things I'd like to be able to have money to travel and to redo my house and things Mm -hmm. that I don't want to feel like I can't do what I want to do. and. I realized it that was more important to me to get that work on that. I love and, that. So it helped you uncover this other yeah. like path that you hadn't even Yeah. And I don't and, and and that doesn't mean that if there isn't some sure. amazing man and if you're out there watching this, <laughs> don't hesitate to contact me. <laughs> um I'm I'm open to that, but I'm not gonna go looking for it. I felt like I had to spend too much time mm-hmm. trying to make make that work. And, you know, I'm not really your box person. So, you know, it's going to be a unique person that would really dig me anyway. And I'm at the age where there are way more women than men. And, yeah, so if somebody great comes along, the universe wants to send somebody great, I'm open to it. I'm just not going to go looking for it. And I am going to work on my on my career and my wealth so that I'm not reliant upon anybody for what I need. Wonderful. 
I, when we had, I had, so I had a coaching session with Tammy and that was super beautiful and helpful. And I just really appreciate, like you said, that active listening that you had, it was felt very intentional the way you could listen and you like almost, it's like you could hear things that were like in between what I said, you know? And I feel like sometimes we can know what we need to do ourselves or for me, I'll just speak to myself. I have like at times like known what I need to do or like, I know it's there if I really sit down and think about it or, but I don't always make the time to really look at it in a more matter of fact way without all the like, Oh, this is happening today. And my kids throwing up and like, you know, but you sort of helped me to, uh, almost take a step back from Mm -hmm. the challenges and keep holding the vision of what I want for my business, for my family moving forward Mm -hmm. and, um, helped me to sort of like tease out and uncover through your questions, like, well, in where, where are the doors opening and what parts of your work are really lighting you up and the things that you do want to increase and what actionable steps can I take to move towards that goal? Mm -hmm. And I just really appreciate that guidance from you. And it's not advice, it's guidance, <laughs> it's guidance, an okay word to use yes, for it. it, yeah. Is, it is. Um, yeah, guiding me on this path and helping me to, like you said, uncover my own answers that are already inside <laughs> through your thoughtful questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's a, it's some sometimes people want to just try it out and that's great. Okay. It seems to work better and I'm when I started the program, I was like, really, you know, you're gonna like, have people have a package, you know, and have more um, times with you. But really, I found that it does build on itself. Mm -hmm. So encouraging people to try it more than just once. Yes, especially if the first time is like, it's okay, but I'm not really sure it helps. Like, I mean, it took me till the fourth session Uh to realize I don't want to date anybody yeah like that so (laughs) no I think that's really important to name especially right now I feel like we're in a time where people want things back and Mm -hmm. they want the you know they want it to happen right away and they only they just want to be able to check the box and be done with it Mm -hmm. and I appreciate what you're saying that some that it builds and it can take some time to uncover some deeper layers and Mm -hmm. um have more time for those questions and thinking and wondering and envisioning forward to, um, to move towards maybe our, my, I'm thinking of like myself and like goals in a more uh, focused way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's a certain accountability that though I'm not holding you accountable to mm-hmm. it, but if you know you're coming back to see me in a couple weeks or a week. Yeah. Um, I have that with my person who is helping me with my business coaching. Yeah. Um, we didn't, shouldn't bring it up necessarily what I had the actionable steps that I had said, but mm-hmm. I knew I was going to see her again. I really should do that thing. I she said I was going to come out. out. Yeah. Just held me accountable to me thinking Absolutely. I said it out loud. Yes. Yes. Is there, have you found, or do you feel like there's like a sweet spot or does it depend like of a number of sessions or does it depend on what the person's coming to you for? Yeah, I I haven't really done anybody long term. I think the longest I've done is like four sessions with somebody. I think kind of recommendation from those who are teaching us is three to four is a good um, like minimum Mm -hmm. number. Um, Of course, somebody could do just one. Some people, you know, do will uh, contract for a year. Yeah. And they'll do that. And then if they feel like they've accomplished what their goals were, then at the end, they're done. But maybe they'll come back in six months to just talk about some one thing. But Mm -hmm. it should be done. Mm -hmm. You know, you shouldn't need to be like, sometimes, you know, with therapy, we 
some people feel like they need to keep going all the we time. We can get addicted to therapy. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Coaching should help you reach your goal, pass, get past your hurdle. Mm-hmm. And then maybe you have a new goal down the road and you sure. want to, you know, re um, connect for that, but it shouldn't be something that takes, you know, that I'm thinking that you should come to me forever. Yes. <laughs> So I appreciate that as well. Um, I had a question and then I was listening so intently that it kind of floated Mm -hmm. away. Um, I'm going to ask. And the pause is good. That's true. I mean, just pause it. Pausing is good for us. Yeah, I know. I feel like we don't do it enough and I don't edit my pauses out the podcast good. so people have to sit with us during the pause yeah the pause is good <laughs> the real life oh um as you're growing like this aspect of your business mm-hmm. have you been visualizing like your or who you know if women are listening right now and they're like I wonder if she's the right coach for me or am I the right like you know coachy for her do you have a like vision of your ideal coachy. I'm calling myself, we're supposed to, you know, have a niche that we kind of fit into. Yes. And I am calling myself an empowerment and transitions coach. Ooh, yeah. Um, I do have a lot of people who come to me about businesses wanting to start a business. Now mm-hmm. I think Probably I attract that because people know that you know me and they know I have businesses. Um, But just, I would love to work with women who are, are coming into menopause, this last, this season of life, if you don't want to call it the last season of life, because it's (laughs) depressing. That's okay. Um, But this crone time, you know, Uh where I, I have been talking to people about that for really for the last decade plus, because it is such a maligned time of life. Maligned. What does that word mean? Um, Spoken badly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, People think that you're, once you, once you go through menopause, you know, first off, everybody thinks, tells you, you need hormones to Mm -hmm. fix it. Even bioidentical hormones, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. there's always something you should be taking to make it like you weren't, didn't go through menopause. And that's not real. Mm -mm. We go through menopause and our hormones change for a reason. Yeah. And we, I'm just going to say it. We do not dry up. We do not hate sex. Our tissues do not become friable and we're falling apart. It is not true. Um, I had a amazing sex post-menopause and it really oftentimes comes down to if you're in a sh- can I say swear yeah if you're in a shitty relationship yeah then sex <clears throat> will be shitty mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it'll feel dry and icky but that isn't anything to do with menopause <laughs> it has to do with a relationship <clears throat> so um yeah I think this is the best time of life that i have experienced. I've loved all the times of life, mm-hmm. but this is great. You, I don't have the same worries. I don't have to worry about being pregnant, getting pregnant. I don't have to worry. Um, I don't have to worry about a partner. Um, I'm, I feel good. I don't have to, you know, I don't dye my hair, obviously. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, I don't know. I just, it's great. You, you have a pol- Even if you don't have a plan, you have a plan. It's like you've experienced all these stages of life and now you have an opportunity to to be alive and talk about it. Is is there a part in our culture that makes older women invisible? Absolutely. That's the maligned part, you know, Mm -hmm. where Mm -hmm. you should pretend like you're like you're young. However, I have to say that it has been a beautiful thing to come into this time of life with so much of the entertainment industry of the women um, embracing their color of their hair, Mm -hmm. they're not getting so much face 
they're not changing their faces. They're keeping their, their wrinkles and their, yeah. you know, it's just, it is a nice time. Things are changing to come yes. into this because I feel like there's more support. Mm-hmm. It's not just me saying it, you know, I can say it and live it, but then out here in the, you know, uh, media land, mm-hmm. these women who have all this um, power and exposure are saying the same thing. And so that's nice. Yeah. It would be harder if that wasn't happening, I think. Yeah. Yes. I love that. I, would you mind sharing? I remember you celebrating the ending of your bleeding time and menopause. Would you share a little bit about that? Yeah, it, it's kind of a funny story, actually, yeah. because I went through six months of not bleeding. Yes. And I had a party because yeah, I, didn't, was done. I didn't want to wait a whole year. It's six months. And I, so I got these young women friends and we hung out and we had a party. <laughs> and then I had my period and I was like, damn it. And then I had... When another six months, I had no party, um, but I was like, six months, okay. And then I had my period again. And then I just quit keeping track. I just ignored it. And then it eventually went away. I have no idea when I went through menopause (laughs) because I didn't, I stopped, I stopped caring. Yes. It's like, I'm not going to pay attention. Uh But I love that you celebrated it and like, you know, even when when it wasn't quite, but still, (laughs) like not everyone celebrate, just like. I don't feel like we celebrate the start of our bleed and not right. the ending of our bleeding is also a time to celebrate. Yeah. And I, I do, I can't say enough. I meet a lot of women my age who really hate the fact that they're older and that they've gone through menopause. Mm-hmm. And that makes me sad. Yeah. Maybe we need a menopause tea, but sh- the pregnancy and postpartum support is that's what I used. Yes. But almost like a some sort of celebratory yeah. kind of tea that you drink from. You can't drink until you go through menopause. I like that. <laughs> a way to separate from mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. well, you should. Yeah. Yes. Or I just cross off postpartum pregnancy, postpartum tea, and just write in menopause. What else would you like women to know about the services that you offer through your coaching? Um, that there is an opportunity to have a free, um, I'm going to use connection mm-hmm. meeting. Yeah. Um, some call it discovery, some call it chemistry, where you can meet me um, virtually. And we we talk, we probably spend 15 minutes to 15, 20 minutes, maybe up to a half hour, but a short period of time mm-hmm. where you decide whether you like me enough to want to contract for some, Mm -hmm. some appointments, some sessions, coaching sessions, or, um, you know, am I a good fit? And I, I I'll do the same. Yeah. Do you seem like a good fit for me? And we'll, that's where we'll connect. Yeah. That can be really helpful because it's one thing to like read on a person's website, but another thing to have like a one-on-one live interaction and Mm -hmm. really be able to feel each other out. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So for people who would like to invest in some teas or your coaching and consulting, how can they find you? Where are your offerings? On my website, which is called holistic woman tea. So yes. woman, I suppose you'll put this in. The I notes. will. Yeah. I'll have a link in the show notes, but okay. I think it's also nice to just say it. Out yeah. Loud. It's holistic with a W because whole, um, and then woman, not women. So holistic woman, woman T. Mm-hmm. You also can find me at Tammy with the T.com, but that's T A M Y with the T.com. It will go to my website too. Okay. And then are you on social media at all? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, holistic woman mm-hmm. on Instagram. And I think the same on uh, Facebook. And what? Uh, yeah, I'm going to eventually be doing some TikToks and hey, stuff too. So all right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know because I can and it's good for my brain to learn new things. Yes. Beautiful. Is there anything else you'd like to share before we 
stop recording here today. Um, I am just really excited about this. I restarted my postpartum support group that I had started in 2002. I didn't remember what the date. Yeah. But because uh, two clients had asked, come to me and said, we would like to have a meeting on a weekly basis where we can get together and talk about our questions. And they were older moms, or one of them anyway was. And so we started meeting. And at, at some points, we had like 20 moms and 20 yeah. plus kids crammed yeah. into small spaces talking about the things that mattered to them. And as I was finishing up at my, I was working at a local birth center, they had, didn't, they wanted to have one, but they didn't have one going. And as I was leaving, I decided to start up this mama's group. That's mothers, mama's assisting mamas around Spokane is the, what the acronym stands for. You can find that on, on, um, Facebook, there's a Facebook group. Mm -hmm. um, I know that most of your people are, aren't in Spokane, but they are certainly welcome to join that mm -hmm. Facebook group, ask questions. Um, right now it's not being totally used, but I love sitting and listening to moms, new moms. Uh, for example, the last meeting, it's so it's really new and just a few people are coming so far until you know, now that you've just restarted it. Yeah. yeah. And the two the women will get out. Yeah. People will come. Yeah. yeah. And the um, first, the two people last week, one had just had a C-section a week and a half before, Whoa. told us her story, her birth story. So a lot of storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, she was very sad because it wasn't at all like what she had wanted to have. And the other woman had had her baby like five months previously but they both were from out of town they didn't they didn't have family in spokane mm -hmm. and so by the end of our hour and a half together they were planning a camping trip for oh. the next time you could go camping and um just people are looking women are looking for connection yes and an opportunity to meet people they don't have to be exactly the same person as them they just being at the same time of life is helpful mm -hmm. to have that support that they weren't finding elsewhere because we're all isolated yes so anyway start postpartum groups where you are if you mm -hmm. feel like it yeah build community <laughs> i'm so grateful for all the ways that you have built community and grateful that we got to be neighbors for yeah. the years and all the herbs and tea that I've consumed and steamed with and um, yeah I'm just really grateful for you in my life I miss you I miss you too mm. <laughs> oh. I'm glad you came back to the dip. oh yeah all right folks I'm gonna yeah Stop recording now. <laughs> oh, you're out there. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in today to the heart of the soul. If you love the podcast, I would be so grateful if you would choose to subscribe, rate, review, or share the show. If you feel aligned with me and my energy and are feeling drawn to unearth your wild inner knowing, birth your baby wild and free, need support navigating the medical system, are feeling stuck in your grief, are curious about receiving an intuitive mediumship reading, or need a safe person to debrief and integrate a traumatic birth experience with, I am here for you. I have walked alongside women and mothers for over a decade, witnessing real healing, change, confidence, and stability be unearthed in them. I believe that women claiming their sovereignty, returning to their own inner knowing and embodying their wild will truly transform the world. To learn more, book your free clarity call, at www.birthingnova.love 
Until next time, remember to be brave, be love, be wild, be you, and be the change that you seek for yourself and also for the generations to come. Mwah.